Hello and welcome back. We are here continuing as the Ottoman Empire, looking to do all of the Tanzimat reforms. Last episode, we did a few key opening moves, which is we use the agitator mechanic to force ourselves to get an abolitionist. Uh, we also, in particular, focus our industrialization efforts uh, with a sensitivity towards Tanzimat urbanization, so everything is spread out. Um, and uh, we talked about all of the Tanzimat sort of things uh, and how we are focusing on them. Uh, we also uh, engage in a little bit of expansion specifically we went for great shing uh, for two th reasons one for the forbidden city which gives us extra legitimacy from including the head of state and government which will be very very valuable uh, for us because we need to pass a lot of laws as the Ottomans and this will help us pass laws faster but in addition to this uh, we also are taking war reps off of great shing which is one of the best openers you can do um, we did this all by ourselves we had done it with the intention to piggyback on great or not great shing on the UK's war with Great Shing, but the UK has done nothing. And we did it all by ourselves by landing Manchuria first and then pushing in through here. Um, this episode, we will be focused on trying to continue to uh, weaken the landowners, uh, specifically with our abolitionist here. We managed to get off of, uh, you know, serfdom, which was giving plus 50% local governors political strength, and get off of slavery, which is getting plus 50%, um, you know, local governors political strength. And so now, we are looking to continue what we need to pass. We uh, specifically, we need to get onto per capita taxation and also onto hereditary bureaucrats. We're trying for this one now. We're not super married to uh, passing this immediately, but the extra intelligentsia political strength will be nice. Uh, and then also in addition to the minus uh, local governor strength and then looking to either pass per capita taxation or get off of the awful, awful, awful traditionalism. Uh, and this is kind of the moves we are going to be trying to make today, in addition to more expansion that is uh, generally efficient and maybe going for Egypt. We'll see how things shake out. So we have not spread Napoleonic warfare, which is going to be essential for army modernization. We have enough battalions. We have Napoleonic warfare. All we need to do is swatch, swap all of our barracks on over to using better PMs, which they are not currently on, and we will fulfill this. It used to be in 1.1, you used to have to um, do this with all your conscription centers as well, which required you going professional army. I don't think you still need to do it that way, uh, but we're not gonna swap now because we're halfway through uh, starting a diplomatic play against Bolivia. Specifically, Bolivia is a really nice expansion spot because you can dominion them while they are just Bolivia and then they acquire Peru as well. And so you kind of get it on the cheap. And this also gives you, you know, an interest in the region or some adjacencies for looking to expand your market if you want to make some low infamy moves uh, and this is a timely expansion because eventually it becomes Peru Bolivia and then you would have to dominion the entirety or both at once which is generally quite a bit of an infamy so this is kind of why we are doing it right now before we go after Egypt or any sort of thing we still have a truce with Egypt so we can't go after him yet but soon 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 so Peru Bolivia or just Bolivia, or is it Peru, right now just back down, and we've also taken this moment to use a bunch of our excess bureaucracy to put in a bunch of trade routes. Um, specifically, we are trying to import all agrarian goods and export a few capitalist goods. We really don't have too many capitalist buildings. We are not yet on lathes, so our buildings are not very efficient at this current point in time. We are working on getting on lathes in the near future. It's not spreading to us, and once we finish stock exchange, we'll be heading that way. Uh, but the point behind a lot of our trade routes is is we are trying to decrease uh, our auto queue from building industrial or sorry building um aristocratic owned buildings that's why we are running a negative uh meat route although in general we are trying to increase trade volume specifically with argentina and persia because we might look to get them into our customs union and moving forward we kind of want austria as a strategic partner we want to increase volume with them as well as well as not get kneecapped by russia so this is kind of an explanation of where we are going with that now as far as infamy goes we do have a little bit of infamy uh what we will be doing is since we got napoleonic infantry we will be coming in and we will be swapping up to being on line infantry and mobile artillery with everyone which should proc tanzimat if i'm not mistaken ah okay so it does appear that we do need some conscription centers on other stuff is that what's going on here i believe this should proc our army thing and we immediately get a request for a trade agreement we don't have everything built out uh, we have to not have shortages of our goods, and so we'll take a look at what we're currently running shortages of, in addition to coal, which we'll look to import. 
Doesn't look like we're doing anything. I'm not sure why... Oop, that's because we're just looking at luxury goods. Ah, uh, yes. We are running shortages of these. We do have a little bit in the queue, but we can import to alleviate, at least on a temporary basis, some of this pain. Uh, weapons are generally uh, expensive to import. It looks like we can get some pretty profitably from the Russians. And then once things fully kick up, they will be in good shape. We did also adjust a bunch of PMs, so that's what the shortages are about. We don't really mind importing long-term coal but we don't want to import glass long term but for in the short term we can put in a couple especially on egypt who will uh not like us very much anyways and we'll put a little bit on paper because we don't want to get wrecked we can of course trade with shing pretty profitably we would love to pull them into our market we have become a gp which is big nice and regarding the authority the little bit of extra authority we have here we're just going to float it uh we still need to pass a lot of laws it'll help us pass laws a little bit faster we are suppressing the uh, Sunni Ulema, we're bolstering the industrial intelligentsia. We just have so much authority. In fact, I even considered, you know, dropping one of these, um, like maybe dropping the porcelain tariff uh, to try and promote glass production, and then suppressing the petite bourgeoisie or something, but I don't think it's necessary. We're moving in the right direction in terms of clout, in terms of what's going on, and we will just kind of chill while our military PMs take a while to wind up, because we did swap to mobile artillery, and then after a little bit of chilling, we'll be going after Egypt. So we pass or get stock exchange, uh, which in retrospect, I think maybe um, it wasn't necessarily the right choice and we should have just gone straight away into lathe, but lathe is now not spreading and researching. We'll get it relatively quickly. And then once we get lathe, it unlocks a bunch of PMs that switch stuff from being, uh, you know, merchant killed owned to being capitalist owned, which is going to help a lot for juicing up the industrialists who are already coming up right now as it is. We also couldn't resist sticking our finger in the Ottomans or sorry, in Tunis's pie and we dominion them uh, as well uh, before we are looking here to go after Egypt. So as we are winding up this play to kind of see how things shake out we've put all of the return states in there and we're also going to put in war reparations in there. As this has happened uh, France has proposed an alliance and we are going to accept that alliance. I'm not sure if this pulls them into the play automatically. Uh, I don't think that it does. I think that we needed to get it a little bit beforehand um, but but as it stands, they are quite likely to just join of their own accord, and this will allow us to maybe fight off Russia if Russia decides to, that they want to tangle. Um, we don't have a lot of conscripts as a result of, you know, some of the malices we're running, uh, where we are getting, you know, decreased uh, pretty much everything. But we have done a good job all throughout uh, improving relations with everybody. Uh, of course, Russia has continued to be belligerent, but improving relations with basically everyone who could possibly be joining in on this play. Um, that way we can make sure that we can try and get the Tanzimat reclaim Syria uh, going so that we can, you know, finish the sick man of Europe. Also making huge strides in the uh, urbanization. We're coming really, really close. Every single building we are intentionally building is in a place that does not yet have an urban center. So, for example, we're building paper here. Uh, we see that we only have five urbanization. We we'll might as well put in a, co a construction center. So after the construction center is finished, it'll be be 10 and after these it'll finish it'll be 70 and so we'll need to put in another 30 urbanization and we've been pushing this up this entire time we're kind of keen on being able to annex things or be able to take states uh specifically down here and so this is why we're doing this but for now we're going to be taking these egyptian states which we are going to be added to the urbanization consideration um but i think it's worth taking them their return state some of them already have enough urbanization so it's not you know terrible uh but this is what we're doing and hopefully uh, uh, this play will shake out okay. So we managed to get onto a Boyne of Bureaucrats, which is going to be pretty nice here. Uh, on top of that, it's also going to juice up the Intelligentsia, which is long-term going to be pretty good. Uh, but we are ready to pass another law, and I think what we need to go to... Unfortunately, we can't pass per capita taxation, because we're still on traditionalism. we got to get rid of traditionalism first. Passing, getting to laissez-faire, which is what we want, is going to be a bit tough, because there's only 7.8% clout supporting it, um, and there's a lot of opposition. It would be nice if we had romantic where maybe we go agrarianism first and then look to leapfrog. We don't like this negative capitalist IPT contribution, but right now we're getting minus 50, which is even worse. And so um, we will look to kind of swap up to this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to switch uh, to this 
and we are going to look to get lucky. Uh, and if we don't get lucky swapping to laissez-faire, we'll switch to interventionalism, or interventionism, as it were, and try and pass this. Now, this here looks like it's going to be a 1v1, so we will confirm that it's a 1v1 here, um, which should be... Oop, okay, it's not a 1v1. Uh, so we are going to try and sway... Uh, in that case, we're going to try and sway France. Um, this way, maybe we can take war reps off of the USA. we got to be a little bit careful. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that they last minute this. Um, but maybe we can get off of USA some useful things. Now, they really last minute it. So really the only thing, we don't have an interest in the USA. So we can't just add on things, which is actually pretty annoying. Um, oh, and we don't even have enough maneuvers because we already have... Uh, war reparations from Egypt and also liberate her jaws, which was maybe in the mistake in retrospect to add in. Um, I suppose we can make the war reparations primary, which make them less likely to back down, but they're feeling confident here. Um, you know what? This actually might not even allow enough time for France to consider our offer. So what we will do here, can we add anything else? We can add ban. Oh, but if we ban, if we add ban slavery, then we don't have the maneuvers to convince France. Wow, this is wild. The so the whole entire point of it pausing, like, ah, uh, this is just super unfortunate. So I guess we're gonna have to fight the USA. Uh, we're probably gonna mobilize all of our conscripts. Uh, we do have a bit of a weaker army, so we're gonna have to move and shake in this one. We do have some guys that are mobilized that are not on any fronts. We were gonna use them for landings, uh, but we're gonna put in war reparations on America because we won't have enough time to get the sway on France, uh, and we will just have a war, as it were. Man, that's super unfortunate. Just another, like, mechanic that this guy can join last second and then we can't sway or we don't have enough time to sway is uh, kind of a frustrating experience because obviously we sway France earlier if we know that this is going to happen, but okay, it is what it is. We didn't want to sway France earlier, though, because if USA doesn't join specifically, then we would have Egypt maybe backing down. But now we're going to be in for a bit of a tough fight, and so that's... We'll see what we can do. So things are not looking too good. I mean, we are getting into Egypt here, and we're slowly pushing. We have an incoming landing here. Uh, we've recruited 15, another 15 troops. We are running, you know, some negative stuff here. Uh, but we're going to recruit another general in Anatolia. That way he can catch uh, the guy that's coming in right now. I think We're right now kind of looking and paying attention to kind of... Uh, what ideology they are from, but I guess we're going to go with this innovative traditionalist commander. Um, this way he is here to ready to catch this landing and fight. We are going to also, we of course have to uh, mobilize him, but now he is going to be ready once we lose this naval invasion to catch the fight. Um, I think we're going to recruit up some even more troops. Uh, we're doing it out of Ankara and uh, because this place is our capital and we do need to solve even more problems that we are experiencing uh, with our military goods. So we're also going to set the tariffs to nothing because uh, we are currently tariffing it because we're not smart at this game. Uh, and we are going to look to import even more uh, as much as we can uh, to try and nuke these shortages down. We tried to solve it a little bit before the battle, uh, but we're having some trouble, especially because we have raised all of the conscripts and they are even quite a few of these guns but they don't have any cannons uh, it's unfortunate they can't be on cannons because we are on peasant levies uh, which is unfortunate but we have been prioritizing other stuff I mean we've passed a lot of laws uh, but this war is looking a little shaky we were not ready to kind of fight USA on our own and we felt really comfortable because we could sway two GPs uh, but USA joined last minute so this is kind of uh, uh, frustrating I think we're gonna be able to I think we're going to be able to do it, but I think that we're going to be in a bad place financially when we're finished. So we managed to get the Tanzimat army modernization in the middle of the war uh, from, you know, decreasing the tariffs and this sort of stuff. Uh, we still need to fill out the construction queue a little bit here. We're trying a landing over here, and hopefully we can get in. We do control their capital, but they also control our capital, so it's going to be a little bit of a base race sort of situation. I think we can pull it out. Um, I don't think the U.S. has any war goals against us, so once we get peace, it'll just be peace. We only have to be concerned with enforcing on 
the Egypt before they enforce on us. So big nice, we get a piece and we get all of this incorporated. And so now we've completed that Tanzimat entry and we are well on our way to, you know, finishing this full thing. Now we do have a little bit more urbanization to go. And so we will put in enough uh, in the construction queue to bring all these up uh, with the sensitivity of the fact that we are going mechanical tools right now. And in 32 months, we're gonna want some steel. So we're starting to put steel into the queue, although we'll probably just keep kicking around Around, down to the bottom uh, but yeah put in a bunch of this also incorporate it because it has to be incorporated for urbanization uh, but things are coming along uh, swimmingly we haven't had a separatist movement and so these two combined should be enough to get us uh, the sick man of Europe but we're also going for you know the bureaucratic reform we just have to get off land-based taxation and we're just continuing along with the laissez-faire towards that end because we need to be off traditionalism first We've also started suppressing the landowners, um, which is going to generally guide the aristocrats to be mainly more armed forces oriented and decrease the overall clout here. Now, notably, we are going to be getting off a of monarchy at some point, so we really don't want this royalist boyo. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to exile the dissident. Uh, he's also a commander. Uh, let's see if he also gets sent to away. So is Omar. And let's see if he also gets deleted as commander. He is right here. Uh, and let's check it out. He has gotten deleted as commander. Now he's a royalist and he's away. And hopefully we rolled a little bit better. Nope, we just rolled another loyalist. That is unfortunate. And now we have this agitator kicking around. This loyalist agitator. Uh, but we could just promote this guy up. And I think we'll do that. So uh, he is currently a Republican. We will grant him a command. I believe, and he'll take over, and I think we will just also put him into uh, grant him leadership. In order to do this, we gotta come in and put him in government. This is just gonna be a little bit of a temporary thing, because we don't want to lose the agitator, uh, and we want to grant him leadership. And so now he is a politician, so we should have done that instead of using our exile uh, if we were a little bit more heads up about it. But now we can take him out of government uh, to be more legitimate, and hopefully when we are looking to pass some of the Republican stuff later on, this guy will be more helpful. He'll be juiced up by us suppressing the aristocrats, because they will tend to be armed forces as a secondary measure if we take a look in the population tab, uh, where the aristocrats... Uh, we will see that they are secondarily generally armed forces, and so when we suppress, they can't they trend more towards these guys uh, as a means of decreasing the clout. And since they're Republican, it should be easier for us to get off of monarchy uh, kind of moving forward, uh, which we are trending towards uh, right about now. As far as foreign policy, I think we're going to chill slash look for small wars, maybe Dominion, our current puppets, but we will not be annexing territory because we don't want to break our Tanzimat urbanization. So in going after Serbia, which we were doing after Wallachia, uh, we actually end up getting this big war because Russia joined, we managed to sway France, we're looking to release Ukraine and get war reparations. Um, so far we have way more mobilized, but somehow it has us saying we have way weaker mobilization. I'm not sure how active France is going to get involved. Uh, we obviously can't 1v1 ourselves, we cannot 1v1 Russia without uh, like, any really conscripts to pull off, uh, which is part of, you know, the sick man of Europe, we are suffering on the conscript level. So hopefully this war goes okay. Big sad for Austria. But we'll see what happens. And we'll try and, uh, I guess, recruit a couple more guys if it's starting to look not very good. But we'll try and hold off if we can. Uh, and not recruit more uh, military. Well, it looks like France is a little bit of a no-show in this war. Uh, all of these battalions are ours. Uh, fortunately, Russia does not have any war goals against us. It's just Serbian ones. So all we have to do is enforce on Serbia. But this is not looking uh, very nice because Russia is just going to keep pushing into us. We're going to get some turmoil. Uh, we get Montenegro enforced on for their war reps. We'll probably be enforcing on Serbia pretty quick. Not a whole lot Russia can do. But unless, you know, France is putting in some sort of landing, we'll have to settle for not kneecapping Russia this war. We're hoping to liberate Ukraine. Uh, it will be nice that we'll have a truce so they can't directly declare war, uh, but it seems to be the case that the AI can join against you anyways, uh, even with a truce when you as the player cannot. Um, kind of stalling out a little bit with laissez-faire. Uh, you know, that's kind of how things are going with that, um, but it should be okay. But overall, not the biggest deal. We were hoping we could kneecap Russia here, um, but I think there's just no way and it's not worth trying to recruit up in order to, uh, oh, this is gonna be nice. It's not worth like recruiting up. We're actually, okay, what do we want to do here? We could, uh, 
gain one progress of phase minus six group approval from the them well they w can support it but we could acquiesce to the demands but then we would also oh we just push it forward one oh but we get minus enactment time hmm let's think this is actually an interesting one uh because we're not on we only have 34 percent chance but then we'll have like 50 nearly 50 percent chance after we do this if we acquiesce to demands and we won't if we end up stalling out we're going to be in trouble with the industri uh, industrialist approval level um but also we're going to be taking a 30 percent chance twice or we could take a near 50 percent chance or sorry it's going to be a near 50 percent chance twice versus a 30 percent mm. I think we just push it through one level and we get the minus on the enactment time? Maybe not. Well, because we're so close. Prime opportunity. And so now we're on adoption. So that'll be nice. But yeah, it's looking like this war, we're just going to enforce on, uh, you know. Uh, and honestly, we just want to subjugate them and do this. Uh, but Russia will not approve of this, but it's not going to matter. We also have to fill up this queue, so we'll stay paused and we'll fill up the queue. And we get a bit of a nice capitulation here, uh, getting all the war goals we want. Now we just have a war against Russia, which we're just going to white piece out of. We're not getting the support from France we would need. Uh, really kind of annoying, because we gave France an obligation for this, and they have sent... Oh, wait, what is this? Well, France has decided they finally want to move in on this. Okay, well then, I guess we're gonna go for the Wa Russian war reparations. That's so wild. Did France not want to fight because, like, Serbia was in it, and now that Serbia's out, they do want to fight? It's so... The, the AI's behavior is just so strange sometimes. But yeah, if France is sending 350 battalions, I guess we'll stick in it. I mean, uh... And I guess we'll probably try and do naval landings on their capital to try and work in an enforcement, something like this. Uh, but we can be enforced below zero because they have no war goals on them. Us, so it's very... We'll see what we can do. Uh, I imagine we won't be able to get this, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, we will look to land the capital immediately, though, now. Landing coming in clutch here. We get a big one up uh, on their capital. And if, you know, if France can manage to help us push this back or at least hold it, maybe we can kind of swing in here. We're sending more reinforcements. We might do another landing just to try and, you know, get in on a higher percentage of them occupied. But you just see we're down into negative. We might, might not be able to swing this. All right, so right as we're, like, finishing that little clip, we pass laissez-faire, which is super nice. We only had, like, a 33% chance to do it. Uh, now... We are gonna, we've only been, we've stuck, been stuck at 25% uh, access to the investment pool. Now we have 75% access. And on top of that, the capitalists are going to be getting juiced up uh, in terms of their contribution. It's going to be getting a positive modifier. So now we are in excellent shape. Also, we're now going to go uh, per capita taxation, which will radicalize the landowners. But we have been suppressing them. We've been trying to bring them down. Uh, this is still going to lead to a rev, so maybe we don't want to do it. Maybe we want to try and see if we can find an ally first. Maybe we just want to piss off the Sunni Ulema instead uh, and see what we can do here. We could also move on to landed voting here, especially because we have the Republican... Oh, would the Republican Boyo die? Yeah, he's a royalist now. That's unfortunate. Let's see if we have any ag agitators we can invite. No, we don't. Uh, but as far as laws go, maybe we want to start moving off of, uh, you know... We want to start moving in the direction of some voting. Uh, we do have a pretty powerful block uh, in the intelligentsia and the industrialists. I don't think the local governors win. They might win. It might form a three-party block between these three. So maybe we don't want to do it quite yet. We can't really go presidential republic. Um, so I guess we go for land-based taxation. Ooh, or we could do schools. No, we have to do religious schools if we do schools. So I think we're going to do freedom of conscience here. And then look to do schools. And then look to get off of... Uh, no, I think we should just do per capita and suffer the fact that we might have a rev or we might have to deal with a rev. Now, uh, as far as passing per capita goes, we could... 
pass it faster with the rural folk, but it doesn't look like we can be as legitimate with the rural folk, but it'll be a little bit faster. We could even do this, which is more legitimate, so maybe we do this uh, for the passing of it uh, because the rural folk will help out with that. But yeah, that is tremendous. Uh, expecting to see this number shift dramatically as more investment pool starts to get used uh, by the private construction queue. Um, we do have some more guys coming on over here. Uh, gonna have to micro that a little bit. Uh, might just white piece here. They're getting minus 1.6. We, I probably just have too much casualties. Yeah, we have too much casualties. We're decaying faster. We're just gonna white piece here. A little bit unfortunate that France didn't want to come first. And since Russia has no war goals against us, uh, we didn't bottom out at zero, so they're just we just can't do it. Unless we maybe decide, maybe we can enforce just the war reparations on them if we can get them low enough. I mean, maybe they will accept just war reparations, so I guess we'll stick in a little bit longer. We do want the war reparations that would help out. Our war reparations from China, I think, have run out. Yep, so that's why we're running this mega huge deficit. Uh, that's where this came from. Uh, and so we'll look to probably Dow China again over something frivolous and loud, like the like the car outside uh but other than that that's probably going to be taking place next episode we'll see if we can enforce on russia here for war reps though all right so we got enforced on by the russians unfortunately we're out that situation where they were offering us white peace uh and we uh could not send them a war goal for demanding war reps um, and so this is the state of affairs for that. Uh, we are currently uh, losing a lot of money. We're really hoping to get the war reps. I think if we let let's next Monday tick over, this will come down quite a bit. Nope. Okay. So we're going to have to do something to try and fix that. Part of that is us giving a tax break, though, uh, and while we are passing per capita taxation. So we're trying to get this through right now. I think we can hold on, wait, and then have per capita taxation, which is going to help out quite a lot, uh, you know, once we get there. And then on top of that, we are going to look to try and mess with Great Shing, but that'll be next episode. Uh, this episode, we fought Egypt. We did one of the Tanzimat reforms for reforming our military. Um, we had just like a pretty big come up uh, in terms of laws as well you know we did get onto laissez-faire which is uh really big and that was like a really small chance and i think in this same episode we also got appointed bureaucrats and so things are coming along quite nicely we just have to amend this tax one which you know we have 58 percent on in order to do bureaucratic reform so we're pretty close to finishing the sick man of europe probably going to rein it in next episode we'll try and figure if we can uh you know manage this deficit a little bit better um but currently we're hoping that the investment pool kind of kicks up a little bit more or private construction kicks up a little bit more and we can make use of some of this investment pool um you know on top of we're going to take a look at trades in the interim and this sort of stuff uh to try and make our buildings more profitable and such but i hope you enjoyed uh feel free to like comment subscribe uh do the youtube algorithm stuff and have a good 